Hello everybody, I'm Justin and in this tutorial I will show you how to create such tent. We will be using Blender 2.82, but you can follow this tutorial using any other modeling software really. UI, shortcuts and names of features might differ, but general principles are the same. Ok, before I begin let's talk about uh, the overview. The whole process of creating such tent consists of 10 main steps. Sketch, render setup, basic geometry, refined geometry, subdivision, cloth simulation, more refined geometry, bake, texturing, final changes. Since this is part 1, I will cover the first 5 steps. We will do cloth simulation, texturing and final composition in the next part. Let us start. In the beginning, there is an idea. In modeling, in general, it is good to draw your idea first. So step 1 is a sketch. Not a drawing, just a rough sketch containing vital information, such as like a top-down view, side view, perspective view, and uh, maybe smaller elements such as crates, barrels, chests, uh, etc. Second step is a setup of your 3D modeling software, in my case Blender 2.82. If you're wondering what a bad setup is, that would be it. Modeling viewport is tiny, everything is cluttered and most of the stuff you won't even use. So let's make sure that your screen has only things that you really need. Main working screen has 3D modeling viewport, which takes up the most space. To optimize it even further, you can press N to hide the sidebar on the right and T to hide the one on the left. F11 to go full screen mode and then control spacebar in order to enlarge the current viewport. I like using viewport shading and flat lighting, shadows turned on and cavity set to world type. I also turn on the outline to see where the geometry overlaps. I use Blender built-in add-ons. To access them, head over to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons tab and search for Mesh Tools add-on, Loop Tools add-on and finally very useful F2 add-on. Now in the 3D viewport place your drawing vertically and horizontally. Just drag and drop image straight into the 3D viewport while being in the side view and the top-down view. Reposition and rescale them. And now we are ready to begin modeling. Simple geometry. I start modeling the tent from the very top, its roof. First thing, go to the top view and create a plane. Reposition it so it hovers over the top down view in your sketch. Press tab to enter edit mode and X to remove only faces. Move vertices with G so they match the shape of the roof peak. We don't have enough vertices, so press Ctrl R and use mouse wheel to increase amount of cuts and left click to accept. Reposition them. And now we have too many vertices, so select extra ones and press Ctrl X. Select the whole loop with Alt and click and rescale with S. E to extrude and right click. S to scale them up and left click to accept. In the perspective view, select edge loops and move them up or down and scale them to model one of the peaks of the roof. I copy one of the edge loops with Shift D and move it to the side where the other peak of the roof is. Using simple operations such as E extrude, G move, double G to slide, S scale and R to rotate, I position vertices where I need them to be. Sometimes I enter the 3D perspective view to move them up or down but I mostly work in the top down view. I connect those vertices by selecting them and pressing F or pressing F3 and using a bridge tool. I try to keep topology as quads, not triangles, because quads are easier to work with and give consistent shading. Sculpting, editing and later on using modifiers is much more efficient when your topology consists of uniform quads with good flow rather than triangles. If I have no choice and I have to use some triangles, I make sure that they are in places where, where they will be the least destructive for the workflow. In the case of this tent, such places are near the very top of the roof, where the dollies are. Those triangles are also there because I don't want the topology to get really really dense in those areas. By using triangles, you can transition dense topology with less dense topology. This is also reason why we started modeling the tent from the top. Let's imagine that from the very peak of the roof, there is a droplet sliding down your geometry. Your topology should follow the path this droplet makes, so there is a nice flow to it. Remember, your topology will be the basis for how the cloth folds and stretches later on. For the bottom edges of the roof, I make sure that they are spaced evenly. I do that by using space operation on the side panel in the section loop tools. It is important that distances between vertices on that border are even, so that later on when I extrude stripes, they all have the same thickness. 
Sometimes I use knife tool, which cuts through topology, creating new edge loops, and from time to time I connect vertices that belong to the face by pressing J. To finish basic form of the roof, I select border by alt and clicking twice on one of the edges of this border and extrude it downwards. Now it is time to make walls. As before, add a simple plane, but this time don't remove the face. Rotate the plane 90 degrees on x-axis and position it properly. Then, from the top view, enter the x-ray vision, alt z, and extrude edges along the edge of the roof, making sure that wall vertices are spaced evenly. While extruding, use box selection to select both of the vertices, since two of them are perfectly overlapping in the top-down view. Walls should be continuous without breaks, and the entrance of the tent for now is also a wall. Later on, as we add cloth simulation with properly placed static vertices, this wall will turn into nicely shaped flaps. In the perspective view, I can transform vertices up and down so they match the shape of the roof. Then, I scale bottom edges of the walls and add few loop cuts along to create a curved shape. After that, using proportional editing, I move the whole groups of vertices, controlling how they move by choosing fall off. It's either smooth or sharp. Smooth fall off is good for vertices in the middle of geometry, uh, and sharp will be more useful for an apex. Proportional editing is actually very useful for making the model look more organic and natural. Just remember that your topology has to be dense enough to support it, but not too dense since it will be harder to edit it in a conventional way, which is transforming individual vertices. Even though later on cloth simulation will help us achieve realistic and detailed look, you should make everything look like cloth even at this stage. Adding additional loop cuts and using proportional editing and smoothing out geometry makes next stages easier and gives you a good idea on how the model will look like when it's finished. Ok, now let's add structural elements of the tent. Start by adding a cylinder with only 8 sides. In a side view, scale it down along two axes and up along the other one. Place it properly and add some loop cuts in the middle to be able to change its shape slightly. When happy with the shape, duplicate it in the edit mode and create all posts of the tent. Tops of those posts cut through the fabric of the roof and later on will be replaced with dollies. Hide the roof with H and create the inner structure by copying one of the posts, scaling it and rotating. It will be placed in a circular array around the main post and it will be easier to rotate it in the object mode. For that, select the bottom edges of the rib, press Shift S and choose cursor to select it. Then exit editing mode by pressing Tab and set the origin of the rib to the cursor. Now transforming is done in object mode and the origin, placed at the very end of the stick, makes it much easier. You can scale, move and rotate ribs in object mode, but you should always remember to apply their transforms later on. From time to time I rotate them using the trackball rotation which can be accessed by pressing R key twice. It's a bit tricky, but you can get used to it. Now comes the time to make ropes. I must admit that rope work is my favorite thing when it comes to modeling tents. Enter the side view and add a curve. In the edit mode, start by dragging vertices by their handles. Then, for some of them, select them and click V in order to change their type to 3. Now you can move their handles individually. To extrude, select vertex on one end of the curve and press E just like previously with vertices on meshes. In the perspective view, align rope vertices with features of the roof. My ropes are a single shape with a pretty high resolution and small depth of 2.5 cm. Make sure that your rope is set to 3D, otherwise you won't be able to move it outside its original creation plane. Keep in mind that all the ropes are just placeholders. In this form they are pretty hard to texture properly. Unless you are happy with rope without texture, just a single color. General idea is to create a straight piece of rope that will follow those curves using curve modifier later on. Such straight piece will have optimized topology and properly done UV map. After ropes are roughly laid out, I add small pegs to anchor them to the ground. Once pegs and all supporting posts are in place, ropes can be attached to them with more precision. We're almost there. Create a simple plane and reshape it in the top-down view. This will be your floor. As before, move it downwards in the perspective view. Make small adjustments to the posts, pegs, as well as ends of ropes. Add a cube and scale it in a way that it resembles a beam. Build a structure bearing weights for the entire tent. And finally, place a simple vertical cuboid as columns, supporting the weight of the platform. Before subdividing the mesh, we should take care of the stripes at the edge of the roof. 
select neighboring parts of two edge loops at the border of the roof and right click and choose subdivide. This will create additional edges that are perpendicular to the selection. Even though I used a space operation earlier on in order to make sure that all distances between vertices are equal, some segments have a slightly different spacing than the others. I can mitigate it by changing amount of subdivision levels on each segment and even removing some of the newly created edges and using space operation again. At this point, you are left with a bunch of end guns all around the border of the roof, which is pretty bad. So, bye bye. Ah, okay, I'm joking. Just create another loop in between, two most exterior loops of the roof, and gradually merge vertices the way you can see here. To merge vertices, first select two of them in order, and press Alt and M. Then choose at last or at first, depending on your selection order. Now, in order to extrude actual stripes, select every other edge on the border. To do that, select the first ones with Shift and press Ctrl, Shift and Plus several times to continue weird selection pattern. Once selection cycle is completed, extrude edges downwards and scale them along their individual origins. Then extrude them again, type in S and 0, so they basically turn into points. Next, with the selection still on, press Alt and M and choose Merge by Distance to remove duplicate vertices. Repeat the same sequence for remaining edges, extruding, scaling, extruding again and scaling with value 0, as well as merging afterwards. The last stage of this tutorial is about subdivision. Select only roof and walls without ropes and structural elements and press Shift and H to hide everything else. Go to the edit mode and start selecting all convex edges. Also select borders, well actually you can start from selecting the border using Alt and double click method. Once selection is done, press Shift and E in order to set up edge creasing. Type in value 1 and hit enter, you can now exit edit mode. After subdividing, these edges will still be sharp and well defined while rest of the fabric will have been smoothed out. When edge creases are set, press Ctrl and Spacebar to show all the other windows such as Timeline and Properties tab and click on the modifiers icon, Add Subdivision Surface Modifier and set the viewport subdivisions to 2, 3 or 4 depending on how dense your topology. In Object Mode, select Roof and click and choose Shade Smooth. Do the same for the walls and then click Alt and H to show everything else back in the viewport and enjoy the final result of part 1 of this tutorial. Whoa. I hope it was useful to you and I will see you in the next part. Until then, stay safe.